Is it possible to make wedding rings from a sconce? Well, for Ron Swanson, yes, and he makes it look easy. It's not rocket science. I removed the sconce, fired up my grandfather's torch, heated up the pieces in a cast iron bucket, liquefied the metal, poured into a mold. This scene perfectly exemplifies Ron's character, and I've always wanted to try it out for myself. In fact, every time I share one of my goldsmithing projects on Reddit or Imager, without fail, I get a comment referencing this scene. And on that subject, the award for the earliest such comment, way back in 2015, goes to a user by the name of none else, Defunk My Junk. Congrats. Obviously, keep it over a low flame to achieve a nice temper, cooled it in antifreeze, and just forged and shaped the rings. Any moron with a crucible and a suddenly torch and a cast iron waffle maker could have done the same. The whole thing only took me about 20 minutes. People who buy things are suckers. You heard the man, he said any moron could do it, so I guess that's my cue. Starting with a list of necessary items, grandfather's torch, a fire starter, eye protection, hand protection, a cast iron bucket, a cast iron waffle maker, a ladle for ladling the liquefied metal, antifreeze for some reason, heavy duty cutters, a flex shaft and handpiece, chasing hammer, and a mandrel. And the star of the show, the sconce. All right, we need to talk about the sconce because you see, this is where things get complicated. In fact, this is not the first time I've tried to make this video. Nay, this is the third. And each time it came down to that pesky, pesky sconce. With the first attempt, I specifically found one that was made out of aluminum, which has a melting point of just over 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, which is around 660 degrees Celsius. But actually, you know what? Scratch that. We're not using Celsius. Ron, in true American fashion, would only want us discussing Fahrenheit. You're welcome, Ron. So I broke apart the aluminum sconce and tried melting it in the cast iron bucket, but it just wouldn't melt. So I cut it into smaller pieces and tried melting them in the crucible, and they still wouldn't melt. I thought maybe there was just too much air and heat loss occurring for the pieces to melt properly. So I got out my electro melt furnace, placed the pieces inside, and set the melting temperature. And wouldn't you know it, this furnace, which can melt silver and gold, both of which have a higher melting temperature than aluminum, still could not melt this sconce. So I did a bit more research and concluded that the sconce was most likely aluminum oxide, which basically means that the aluminum has been oxidized to be resistant to weathering and corrosion. And I guess that really does make sense because many sconces I found online were for both indoor and outdoor use. But most jarring of all, the melting temperature of aluminum oxide is a cool 3,762 degrees which basically meant game over for my first attempt. Discouraged, I put the project on hold. A few months later, I came back and studied that scene with Ron. Pause. You notice how the metal keeps its liquefied state even after the flame is removed? I came to realize that the metal was most likely something with a much lower melting point, something like tin, which melts at just 449 degrees. I set off into thrift stores looking for an old tin sconce, but honestly, it was really hard to tell the metal type of everything that I found, and the candle sconce that I did find ended up not melting either. Most likely, it was also oxidized. So I guess you could say that was the end of my second attempt. Many months passed, and I decided to give it one last go. I didn't want to destroy any more sconces, so I came up with a plan. I drove down to the Bay Area, stopped by a metal refinery, and was able to purchase two ingots and a couple bags of pure tin. But what about finding a sconce? Well, I guess I'm just gonna have to make my own. To begin, I'll take two sticks of sculpting clay, I'll break it apart and hammer it, and spread it out evenly over a small baking tray. The next step will be carving the shape of my sconce into the clay, and I thought it'd be fun to do Ron's home state of Indiana. So I'll just go ahead and carve Indiana from memory. Who am I kidding? <laughs> it's the squiggly lines for me. Channeling my inner kindergartner, I'll do my best to stay within the lines as I carve out the state of Indiana. Removing the paper guide, I can then dig out the excess clay, revealing a nice recessed area which will become the shape of my sconce. The clay is then baked in the oven for 30 minutes at 375 degrees, during which it hardens up quite nicely. It's finally time to see the sconce come to life by melting and pouring this pure popcorn tin. After the first pour, I can see that the sconce is not quite as thick as I wanted, so I'm just going to pour in two more ingot bars.
After allowing several minutes for it to cool, there we have it. One state of Indiana in tin form. You can see this little mound here where the tin didn't melt all the way. It actually looks kind of cool like a mountain on a topographic map. So yeah, naturally the first thing we're gonna do is get rid of that mountain because Indiana is flat. Next, I'm gonna clean up the edges and add a bit of texture to the surface of my sconce. The light source of this sconce is gonna be a candle adhered with liquid cement. True craftsmanship. So I finally have a sconce that will work for this project, but I'm a bit exhausted. I need a boost. I'm going to need to truly embody the mindset of Ron Swanson. And one thing immediately comes to mind. Transformation is complete. A wax canvas apron, the white wedding shirt, bow tie, mustache, a glorious full head of hair. And suddenly it hits me that it's not rocket science. I removed the sconce, fired up my grandfather's torch, heated up the pieces in a cast iron bucket, liquefied the metal, poured it into a mold, obviously keeping it over to low flame to achieve a nice temper, cooled it in antifreeze, and just forged and shaped the rings. Any moron with a crucible, acetylene torch, and a cast iron waffle maker could have done the same. The whole thing only took me about 20 minutes. People who buy things are suckers. And now I'm gonna do something that Ron would never ever do, and that is ask you for a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for your support and um, stay classy.